already being inducted with uh, under the auspices of a Heritage Award concert promoter. Mm -hmm. What an amazing story! But I want you to introduce yourselves and how you who you are in the family of Ed Doherty. Sure. My name is Joni. I'm the big sister, and uh, Joni Phone. John Doherty, Ed's son. Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm thank I'm his you. daughter as well, but big Good. sister. Yeah, big sister. Yeah. <laughs> I think. <laughs> and I don't am. you ever forget? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I love his story. I didn't really know anything about it, so this gives us an opportunity to find out what an amazing man he was, and how does that make you feel to to think that your father finally has this kind of light being shown on what he did, and we'll get into what his what his magic was, but but. All these years have passed, and he was so mm -hmm. instrumental in Salem. But how does that make you guys feel that, yeah, my dad deserve, deserves this accolade, I would think. Yeah, no, absolutely. He, uh, I mean, you know how he started, don't you? He was a school teacher, yeah. and his kids needed things to do, so he started having dances with bands. And, uh, and he was a math teacher, and he hears these kids just kind of feeling like, oh, there's just nothing to do in Salem on a, on a weeknight or a weekend. He's a football coach, and his kids would get suspended because they would be on the gut. So if you're on the gut, when you got back to school, you couldn't do after school activities. What does that mean? That next week. So if you were out on the gut on Portland Road and your license plate was taken, then you got suspended from all after school activities the next week if you were there after dusk. So he asked his kids, why are you out there? And they said, there's nothing to do. The so, gut? The gut. Yeah, it was a road oh. like, that they raced on. Oh, in Salem. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or they so. were just generally getting into trouble, and they just needed an option. So he took the initiative to, you know, to have dances on Saturday Start nights. school dances. And, yeah. and in, in good old, uh, where the Knights of Columbus Hall, no less, mm -hmm. that, that they opened their doors so generously to all these kids, and there were like hundreds of them that mm -hmm. would come. So they found a thing to do. Right. The teachers were the security guards and the, would make the concession stands. And I think the first show, I'm not exactly sure who it was, but another teacher went in with him. And at the end of the night, I think they split like $2.50 or something. Not much. And then was it... Um, it was 25 Revere? cents to get in, yeah. 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 And of course. Who was the second one? Sonny and Cher or... Uh, I think it was the Whalers, the Whalers and then Sunny and Cher. But he kept the middle school dance mentality throughout. So he wanted So he would bring in the Yardbirds and, and, and Paul Revere and the Raiders and Steppenwolf and Three Dog Night, The Doors, Pink Floyd. Sunny and he Cher. Be, he began to be a, a entrepreneur. Led Zeppelin. Yeah, he would wrap shows with Bill Graham and uh, how did he ever, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think how that he even could happen. Like, does he just call up Bill Graham and say, hey, Come up and see us here in Salem. I mean. Yeah, he would work with booking agents who would be routing shows in and out of the Bay Area. And so he would have them come north to do a show. So some bands played here that otherwise wouldn't have played. It's amazing that he started out so simply as a math teacher and, and wanting to do something for kids. He, he did that. He grew up on a farm. So before he even became a teacher, you know, he was used to hard work. He was very grounded. Uh, and one thing, I, and a lot of his principles from growing up on a farm and from teaching stayed with him all his life, was always very hardworking. And on the farm, you had to, <clears throat> you know, figure out how to do whatever with very limited resources. He was always scrappy. Mm -hmm. And then teaching the dances in the middle school required, required the kids to dress. And so he would have a dress code for his shows, you know, even for the most... Well, until, you know, the 70s, which when everything changed. All but, rules went out the window. But his posters would say, no grubbies, which mm -hmm. meant you, you know, had White to wear. White shirt, khaki pants for the men and, and skirts for the ladies. Girls. Nylon stockings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. <laughs> dress it up. Was, it would say dress up. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so his, say, his yeah. early days st stayed with him throughout. And, you know, he was, he treated um, the people who showed up first thing in the morning to set the stage and the entertainer exactly the same. He was very. A working ethos and really honor very honorable kind of a guy. He was son. very down to earth. You know, he just, he, he uh, saw people as, you know, all being the same. Yeah, very, he sounds like he respected people really to their core. Yeah, you know? yeah. Music's an emotional business. And, uh, and so, um, but I mean, typically his approach would be, uh, you know, more, more level-headed. I think he knew when to be, you know, more 
theatrical when he knew he couldn't be, but he was more level-headed. Yeah. And also, too, I, it's, it's, you know, one thing that really struck me is there was always, once in a while, there was always a sense of magic that would happen with him. And, you know, luck is when something improbable happens, but magic is when the perfect thing happens at the exact right time and is completely unexplainable. And he would have a lot of those things happen. He would book an act, and they would become you know, way more popular and the venue would be way too small or he would have things happen at shows that just seemed like that were just always inexplainable. Um, that is an amazing thing to hear, that there was magic involved in, in what... On, a, on occasion, yeah. things that just were completely unexplainable. Mm-hmm. So EJD Enterprises... It was uh, that was his baby, or how? how, how so was he that? was Edward Edward James Doherty, but he also said it was Ed and Jan Doherty. So I mean, this award I think is as much my mom's. You know, she they were high school sweethearts. They got married slightly right after college. Um, she's so smart. I mean, she you know I think he had the passion and he had the personality, but she had the fiscal mind. She was uh, the one that was able to kind of keep him reined in when he needed to be and then also let him be who he was. So um, yeah, it's even though it's him, I think it's as much them that are there tonight because I don't think there would have been an EJD without my mom. Well, it's considered one of the major rock concert promoters you know, for over a decade. I mean, he- well, you know what I think he did? So he was doing concerts and then um, he, the Oregon State Fair was doing a few shows at the Armory and he kind of got involved with them and started to bring country when country wasn't what it is now, you know, because rock acts were so expensive, but you could bring country in. And I remember Jeannie C. Riley, you know, all of those acts that would come through and then it just kind of propelled itself into going in front of the grandstand at the Oregon State Fair. And then he just started to go to county fairs and I, he really made his livelihood, I think then, plus he felt it was kind of good old fashioned fun and he really was a family guy where I think some of the concerts had gotten in the coliseums you know they had they were driven differently and so he loved i think the fair and festival plus it allowed him to be home in the winters with his family i mean one final question for you ed was known for his vast collection of memorabilia Mm -hmm. just so carefully preserved you know when i when i look over the history of you know meticulous paperwork just saved did you ever look through it, or has it been purged? Is it still there? Oh, we lived it. <laughs> I feel like we lived it. You know, it's kind of neat uh, um, since he's... Posters and all that kind of past, stuff. yeah. You know, we've shared a lot with people that it meant a lot to. You know, there's a lot of people in Salem that in his beginnings all be at the grocery store or anywhere and someone will say, I met my wife at your dad's dance or because of your dad, you know, I, so we, we shared a lot of it. I mean, he had sold a lot of it, um, to prior, probably six or seven years ago, but he did love to collect things. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we have the memories, which to me is a little bit more important than the things. Yeah. We kept some really fun pieces. Yeah. So, uh, more they're personal to us. Yeah. He yeah. was so... We were fortunate. We had a great upbringing. Yeah. You had a great father, Ed Doherty. Yeah, thank you.